Oh. Whew. Cool. New tires for the bike. How you doing today? I don't know why the hell I didn't film taking this apart. I had new tires to put on. I didn't bother filming how to take them off. So imagine there's a few of you that maybe wonder how to get them off in the easiest way. The way that the factory manual says to take them off. And because uh, I wondered, you know, I wondered about, hmm, how do I get this disc brake off? And uh, so I guess rather than make the whole thing a total loss, let's film putting it back together and you can kind of extrapolate as to how to get it off and I'll explain a few things along the way. There's my brand new front. And here is my brand new rear. These are the stock tires, right here. You can see there's quite a big difference there in, uh, in the tread, you know, obviously. These are stock. These are the same tires that were on the bike when I bought it, brand new, in the motorcycle store a few years back. And uh, so I decided after taking some rides the other day with my son-in-law who rides a KTM 250 and he's 35 years younger than I am. He looked at him and he goes, why don't you buy some new tires? And I thought, you know, that's a damn good idea. So here they are. Now I went with uh, this one here is the, uh, this knobby on the rear it is a Tractionator Enduro TT by uh, Motos and uh, it's a 120 90 18 whereas the one that came off is a 120 80 18 and it's got a lot more this is an enduro tire so it's more for the kind of riding I like to do up in the mountains on the trails and then this front one is sort of similar uh, it's a Moto's tire as well. It's an 8121 and it's what they call a hybrid so or an extreme hybrid So uh, those are the tires I went to I'll post links in the description to this video and you'll be able to uh, go look at these tires And I got these tires. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I'm not sponsored at all. I got like 300 watch viewers uh, I bought these at uh, Rocky Mountain ATV online, and uh, the cost of the tires altogether was about 250 bucks, maybe or less. So I'll put the link in. You can go look at them. These are the ones I chose. So if we walk in here and check out the bike, I'm not using a uh, microphone today because there was some buzzing. Hopefully, there's not buzzing in this. Uh, at any rate, here's the bike, and uh, as you can see the tires are off. While it was off, I gave this chain a good thorough cleaning and solvent. I just put a pan of solvent underneath it, and I rotated the chain in neutral, you know, like this, and cleaned my way across the whole chain so it's super clean, and I'm going to lubricate that when I put this all back together. Um, on the front, it's pretty simple. It's just the... Uh, to get this apart all you do is you literally just take the nut off the end here and uh, of course you have to jack the motorcycle I, I, it goes out sane right this is the jack that I use and I've got a couple of uh, tie downs hooked on it uh, to just stabilize the motorcycle on it and it's and then I used a couple of good jack stands at the back here to hold up the swing arm the one isn't really doing much of anything. It just makes it a little bit more stable. Um, so that's that's how I raised the motorcycle up uh, when I took the, the tires off both ends of it. And uh, so 
literally on the front you just take off this nut right here push the axle out there's these two uh, dust caps that go over the bearing seals and then the axle is just lightly greased and you pull that out of there and I'm not joking that thing comes right out I didn't have to back off the pistons and the caliper uh, or in the uh, in the brake caliper or anything so that was pretty cool now on the rear uh, the only thing you have to do to get the rear off I took the chain guard off so there's a bolt here a bolt here and it kind of slips over this gizmo right here I took that off and just to get it out of the way so I could see what I was doing the manual calls to remove this this cover right here this chain cover which I did that and then um, you'd simply take off the axle nut on this side pull this adjuster and then tap this axle through and and uh, you don't have to screw around at all with the brake caliper because it's it doesn't require it to come off. What I did do though, I released this uh, bleed fitting briefly and I just stuck a screwdriver in here and I compressed the cylinders a little bit or the, the uh, wheel cylinders inside of here and the caliper so that this gap where the rotor is wouldn't be quite as tight. I didn't experience any trouble but I did it beforehand and it just made it come apart a lot easier. And then there's a little plastic guard that goes over this uh, this uh, brake caliper that came off. Other than that, it's easy. It's super simple to, to take this apart. So I'll uh, I'll show you what it's like putting it back together. And uh, if you need to take your wheels off, uh, there you go. Clean this up a little bit while I'm at it. I want to knock my brake shoes out of there. Um, good time to inspect the brakes too while you're doing this because you can see them. So look right here. I get a little closer. Gimbal down just a little bit. If you look in here, you can see some some cuts on these are your shoes right here you can see some relief cuts in these those are your wear indicators and you can see uh, that I have a lot of brake pad left you know dirt bikes so I'm using gears a lot right I'm not using the brakes a huge amount except on steep declines and you know stuff like that so brake shoes are looking pretty good of course bikes fairly well miles I think I've got something like 1200 miles on this motorcycle right now so it's not not a lot so i'm just kind of gonna clean this a little bit and uh that looks pretty good so i'm gonna take this back apart so you got a nut a washer and there it goes and an adjuster and I was at adjustment number six on both sides. Seemed like a good chain adjustment for me. And I'll just pull this side right on through. These are your dust covers. And if you look, these are different. Okay, so you can see the difference in these. This one goes over here on this side where the brake caliper is. That's the narrower of the two. And then the thicker one goes over on the other side. So that that's one thing you can goof up if you don't do this right. So make sure that you uh, put the thinner spacer on the caliper side, right on this side. The thicker spacer then goes over here. I'm going to clean these up and I'll be right back to you. Alright, I think I got 
most all of it cleaned up. So I'm going to install the rear tire first. It's the most complicated of the two. And uh, so I'm just going to do that one first. I'm just going to wipe this axle off and put some fresh uh, grease on it. Dirt bikes get dirty. That's what they get. And I pressure washed this bike before I started to work on it. If you haven't seen my uh, video on how to uh, adjust the valve tappets, check out my channel. Uh, I have a couple. I have a real short one on how to put the engine at top dead center. Another one how to use your feeler gauges to set your uh, intake at three thousandths and your exhaust valve at five thousandths. So, uh, yeah, those are on there. You can check them out. Okay, well, I think I'm ready to put this back together. Now, I haven't done this before, so I might take some wrestling to get it, so bear with me. Okay, change of plans. I'm going to put the front one together first because that way I can shift the motorcycle a little bit forward and I can get the, j the point of contact being the jack and the front tire on the ground rather than the way I'm at it right now. Because if I take those jack stands out in the back, I'm afraid it might be unstable. So I'm going to do the front first. tires are rotation, uh, directional too. They have arrows of rotation on them. Um, they're kind of not as apparent on the front though, but that you can see them, the, the arrows are, are right in here. And uh, so they, they have to be mounted. And they, get, they did them right, so that's cool. So I'm going to clean these, this stuff up real quick. And uh, we'll get this one on first. Just give everything a, a good cleaning. This caliper is through bolted, a couple of bolts, so if you ever have to take it off, it's really simple. Just pull the tire and then pull the bolts. It's a little bit of old grease in there. It's you know, clean it all out. We're going to put new in anyway. I use the uh, Lucas, um, the, the green heavy duty wheel bearing grease. I use it on my toy hauler and my, all, my, all my axle bearing, wheel bearings, I use that, that Lucas green. Some guys like the red and tacky, but I use, I use the Lucas Green. Your mileage may vary. Use whatever you like. I don't know, one's much better than another, honestly. But I've had good, good luck with it. I haven't had any. I've towed my toy hauler to and from Orlando from Washington State seven years running now. And uh, I've had good luck with it. I haven't smoked a bearing yet. It's a 10,000 pound toy hauler and it has my 
as a rule, uh, has my Indian motorcycle inside of it for another thousand pounds worth, plus all the rest of my gear and food and water and all the, you know, all that stuff. Okay, that washer is still on there. Grease that up. Uh, wipe that out. Here goes nothing. Axle goes from right to left. Same in the back. Hopefully I won't knock it off the stand. Kind of probably came apart easier than it's gonna go back together, huh? See the brake pads are trying to shift position on me. Okay. Okay. All right. So one thing I'm going to do right off the bat before I go any further here. gonna compress these these cylinders here in this brake caliper so I'm gonna crack this caliper on a wrench crack the caliper bleed screw open a little bit Then I'm gonna gently, without goofing up my brake shoes, I'm gonna s compress those wheel cylinders back in to open up this gap more. Just gonna compress those out of the way like that. I think that'll make my life a little easier when it comes to reassembling so then just tighten that tighten that down it's this little doodad with a rubber cap on it okay then let's try again I think that my strategy the first thing is going to be to get the rotor back into the between the brake shafts here Seems to be a hard thing to do. Get these spacers back in. Spacer slash dust covers. Okay, we're inside between our brake shoes. Calipers in, inside the brake shoe, the rotors inside the brake shoes right to left on the axle nut and bring this up. There's one half of it. Got a washer and nut for the other side. Spacer is in place. Just like that. Kaboom. This gets uh, torqued to 62 foot-pounds this nut, axle nut. So there's that. So I'm going to grab my uh, socket over here. And
and uh, there, get you over where you can see. This is, uh, by the way, this is a 19 right here and a 17 on the other side. Okay, so that's tight. I need to torque that, but before I torque it, I'll need to grab the torque wrench. So Remaining mindful that we're on the stand here. I'm set at 62 foot pounds. I feel like I'm getting a lot tighter than that. Maybe it's just because I'm paranoid about the thing being up on the lift. Probably I'd lower it down. I think we'll just finish torquing that after it's on the ground. I'm just too nervous about that. Hold tight. Here we go, 62 foot pounds. 6'2, 62. All right. So that was pretty painless. What I was kind of worried about with this, and it doesn't look like I have to worry about it, is I was worried about the fit of this tire on this fender, but it's not hitting at all. It's got, I wouldn't want, want it any bigger. Um, see if I can get my gimbal to cooperate here. Yeah, so there's clearance there, and it's it was rotating just fine. So I was a little worried about this clearance right here on this tire, because this tire is a little physically wider than the original one. Uh, but uh, no, it looks great. It's on there just fine. We should be able to just tap our front brake a little bit and get that yep there it is they get our okay good that just all that did is I just hit the front brake about five or six times to get the shoes back up against the the rotor so um, that's good to go we got front brake we got tire on we're torqued to 62 foot-pounds spacers are in place washers are in place uh, nothing to it real simple I'm impressed with how simple that was now we're going to do the back the back's going to be a little tougher I think it's a little bit more to this one okay so Tell you, if you don't have one of these little stools with the wheels on it, get yourself one. 
Harbor Freight, super cheap. It's one of the best little things that you have for when you're working on stuff, so you're not kneeling on the floor and all that. Washer, right side to left side. Thin spacer on the caliper side, thicker spacer on the other. And I made a mistake already. Got, didn't put the, uh, the adjuster in. Okay. Adjusters go like yay. There you go. That one will put on when I get the thing on, get the wheel on. Okay, this one. You just sort of slide out of the way. This one. Stand down. I'm gonna move the. I'm gonna move this chain to the outside as far as I can. The hot plate. Taking quick wipe of the grease off my hands here from that axle shaft. Bring our rear tire in. I think it's going to be best to come around to this side over here, the right hand side of the motorcycle. Put this wheel spacer in. Wheel spacer, it's got a rubber dust seal on it too. Okay, we're just going to bring it over. There. I'm going to put this adjuster at six. And then I'm going to work my adjuster in from, or not my adjuster, my dust cover in from this side. Let's see here. that in place like so and then uh, we're gonna Just like that. All right. Yeah, baby. Okay, but the, the, the trouble is, is I don't think we're gonna get away with it that easy because we got to get this chain on. So I'm gonna push the wheel all the way to the front and uh, see how how easy this is gonna be now. I don't want to bind it, so make sure that the, just make sure that the axle is all the way forward. In fact, let's just take the adjuster out of the picture. We'll just flip it so that so that we can get this all the way forward. 
kind of hamstrung a little by the caliper, brake caliper, I think. Okay. I say when you tighten the rear axle, use a use an adjustable over here. Um, because it's got kind of an odd duck shape to it. And uh, it's got kind of an oddball shape to it, so I'm just going to use an adjustable on it. I don't think a conventional wrench will really fit on it. Sixty-two. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're shooting for here. I'm gonna slip it off over here. There we are. Six. Six on the money. Middle between the, the, the drive sprocket. Let's, let's shift your view a little bit. Check your slack between the center of the drive sprocket and the driven sprocket. So you want about an inch, about an inch in there. You can measure it. That's about an inch. I measured it already. So. All right, now it's a simple matter of stomping on the rear brake a little bit. That'll be soft at first, and then it'll go right to there. Got tons of brake now, both front and rear. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the bleeder is taut. You know, it's tight there, so, because I did crack that, it was a little bit Okay, then there's a little guard that goes on here. Looks like this. Just kind of keeps the sticks and logs and tree limbs and rocks and crap from smacking into your your brake caliper. Not sure how strong it really is, but it's it was on there, so I'm putting it back. I did get rid of all my, you know. Hated those turn signals that came on this bike. They were, God, they were just these huge things sticking out. And I ride this bike up in the woods at, in, at Mount Adams near Mount St. Helens in Washington State. It's technical up there. And so I put these little, I ordered some of these little tiny turn signals and I took the big ones off with the small ones on because I do, you have to be street legal, you know, in places up there and or you'll get a ticket. And uh, so. The only place you, you don't have to be street legal is in the ORV park. And uh, I don't ride there a lot. So um, everywhere else, you, you better have a license plate on if you're on any kind of a road. And uh, so I put those little ones on. They fell apart. And Chinese crap. Most of the stuff you get from China is garbage. A lot of stuff comes from China. There's a few things decent, but... A lot of it's just crap. Anyway, I went ahead and uh, put those on. They they got ripped off. I think I replaced them with various ones four different times, and uh, finally I just had it. I'd had it with it. I said the hell with it. If a cop wants to give me a ticket for no turn signals, I have arms. I can signal my turns. Uh, so I just I I deleted them and. Uh, I even went so far as back here. I went so far as back here to carefully cut them with a with a, a cutting wheel and cut them off the frame 
and I kept, kept them. And if I need to, if somebody, if I sell the bike and somebody wants them on there, I'll, I'll MIG weld them back on. You'll never know it. It's underneath the fender. You can't see it. And I'll just do the black paint on it. And uh, so I was very careful the way I cut them off. And I just took the wires for the turn signals and bundled them up under here. Put a zip tie on there to keep them out of the way. The only thing I have now is tail and brake light. I'm not thrilled with this gnarly, huge, girly looking brake light, frankly. I might pull this off and find a build them out for a, a, a compact, little compact brake light and tail light. Of course, I have the headlight. The mirrors. The mirrors that came with it, they're just dangerous in the woods. I got those off. These little fold one, up ones on to satisfy the cops. And then uh, after breaking two or three of those, I said, okay, the hell with that. So no more mirrors. So I got rid of my front turn signals, rear turn signals, my mirrors. And I have my license plate, which is up to date, and my headlight, taillight, brake light. I have arms for turn signals. If that's not good enough for them, then give me the ticket. That's, that's my editorial comment on that. Okay, so this thing here is just a deflector to keep stuff from going in here. Limbs, rocks. God, it's very rocky where I ride. I mean, there's rocks all everywhere from two foot in diameter to basketball size to lots of baseball size, soft softball size rocks. Sharp, gnarly rocks. And... Uh, I don't know how much this thing does, but I've never gotten anything in my chain and sprocket yet, which could be pretty devastating, I would guess. So, that's cool. Because I love getting up in the mountains like that. You know, I snowmobile in the wintertime here. I've got a Polaris Axis snowmobile and uh, an enclosed trailer for that. And uh, we ride all over the place. I've been ridden in most states, western states, Montana, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, uh, snowmobiled in all those states. And so there we go. I mean, literally, the only thing left is to put my chain guard on. And before I do that, I want to lube. So we'll do that next. So I'm using liquid wrench, chain, and cable. No particular reason. It was on the shelf, and so I bought it. But uh, I'm just gonna wrap a rag around that, and I'm gonna give this a healthy shot. And we're just gonna go all the way around like that. Nice clean chain. I think you get the idea, right? When I hit the fast forward button. All right, so there's that. Uh, and that this stuff kind of dries to a, I don't know, it's, it's so that it doesn't attract dirt, it dries. It dries, it doesn't stay like oily wet. It sort of turns to a, almost a dry lubricant. Um, so there you go. Um, oh, the chain guard and this other thing have to go back on. So this, this cover goes right there. And then this one, if you look, there's a slot back here. Take that slot, this thing down in there, and there's a metal tab there and that, that you put that slot through and then two fasteners and then your chain guard is back on. Uh, but much better. Whoops, I thought.
so there's just these two that hold this. And I know this is obvious, but when, I, when you're putting some together like this, there's more than one fastener. Just put them in until they're all started. After you get them all started, then tighten them down. If you tighten the first one down, you can't get the second one in. And the seventh or eighth or tenth one in. So just uh, get them all started. Once they're all started, give them all a, a nice little snug. And there's that. And then lastly, we have this guy right here, which is like a Chinese finger puzzle to get it in and out. I mean, I could pull the shifter off, but I'm not so sure that's necessary. We'll know in a minute. Nope, don't need to. Okay. There's a sweet spot for it. And there, I believe, is four fasteners on this. So I was at the motorcycle shop today picking up these tires and uh, it's a KTM shop. It's my son-in-law takes his KTM in there. Takes his KTM in there and um, So I got to looking at some KTM motorcycles, which are nice, expensive. This bike is fine, really, honestly, for me. I might go to that sooner or later, but 65, I don't know how much more of this just... Uh, this kind of stuff I got left in me, hopefully. You know, a lot of it's just trying to stay reasonably fit, which I am not at the time, at the moment. But before snowmobile season rolls around, I will guarantee you I'm going to be spending some time on the rowing machine and the Peloton to get my cardio going. Because this stuff is strenuous. Doing this kind of stuff up in the mountains is strenuous, as you probably well know if you're watching this video. All right. I thought there was four there. I only see three. Okay. Kind of begs the question where this other fastener is from. Oh, I know what it is. It's up for the seat. Duh. Means there's got to be another one hanging around here somewhere. This is a seat. She goes on like this. There it is. Okay, so lastly, you know, the seat, there's a thing right here. Hang on, gimbal down. Right there, there's a little hook under here that just slides in like that. And then, and then under here is two holes for these. Go in there like so. One and So yeah, I think I'm going to remodel the the tail light and get rid of this big honk and really terrible looking tail light. <laughs> <laughs>
set up. I don't know, just a little LED thing with enough tail light to not get your run down if you wind up in the dark. And uh, that isn't going to get broke. Though I've never busted this tail light, oddly enough. I'm surprised. Broke just about every other thing on this bike at one time or another. Though she's still in nice shape. You know, keep it up. I pull all the maintenance when it's supposed to be done. Check everything, lubricate everything, clean everything. It's simple to do. And this thing is easy to work on. It comes all apart nice. Okay, and then what I have is I have, hold on. Whoa, gimbal. Okay. What I have is a let's gimbal down just a little bit. is I have a, a tank bag. I bought this at Cycle Gear, I think. Maybe I ordered it online. I think I got it at Cycle Gear. It's a Sedisi. Um, keep my title in here. And uh, I got uh, some tie downs. I have a really small rudimentary first aid kit with basically bleeding like control. I got like four by fours. I got some Advil some antibiotic ointment and some coband tape so a whole assortment of various band-aids and stuff because you get skinned up riding in the woods and then here i got a, a brand new spare spark plug which i put a brand new one in the bike because the one i pulled out of there was filthy uh it's a dr7 ea made by ngk just got to keep one of those on hand kind of a trick little watertight holder for it and the tool kit that's mounted up by the front it takes a screwdriver or um, allen wrench to get it out i don't carry an allen wrench around except in this kit so i i ditched where they kept this and i just keep it in my my little tank bag here and what i did is i i cut the the tank bag bag things off of it that had the magnets in to hook on the gas tank you know for like a sport bike or something I cut those off and I put, uh, I, I through drilled my fender here and uh, I just got washers and, uh, you know, wing nuts. So that goes on there and that holds all my stuff and it doesn't take up any room. So anyway, that's, uh, that's going to go on there and then we'll be, we'll be done. Okay, so for this uh, round of maintenance, uh, this guy, bike got a new spark plug, a new air cleaner, new oil change, uh, complete chain cleaning and re-lubing, new tires, valve tap and adjustment, and a pretty thorough cleaning. So uh, I think she's ready to go for a quick test ride here.
Yeah, I'd say she's uh, ready to go ride. She's riding ready.